If you're new to wood turning, or even thinking about taking up the craft, you're probably hearing a lot about different kinds of tools, like chisels and gouges. And this one, the parting tool. And you might be wondering what it's for. In all kinds of turning, wood and metal, parting is the operation where we cut a piece off. We're taking a part from the whole. So, parting. This is called a diamond parting tool because it's diamond-shaped in cross-section, thinner on either edge and thick in the middle. That design makes it much safer to use and much less likely to bind in the cut, so it's an excellent tool for the beginner. This is the tool that's most likely to be in beginner tool sets, and it's the one you should probably start with if you're new to the craft. The parting tool has two main uses. The first one, obviously, is cutting off pieces. You might be cutting a small cylinder or a small piece off of a spindle turning, or you could be cutting a large piece off of a faceplate, like when you do a bowl or a hollow form. In both of these cases, it's pretty uncommon to part all the way through your piece, because if you do that, the piece you cut off is really likely to go flying across the room, which is typically undesirable. Rather than cut all the way through, turners who are using the parting tool cut most of the way through, then they generally stop the lathe and finish the cut with a saw, or if it's very small, just snap it off by hand. The other main use for the parting tool is setting a diameter. And even if you're just doing artistic turnings, it's often very important to get an exact diameter or to get consistent diameters in a part that you're making. Now, there's a couple ways you can get this diameter to be exactly what you want. Usually, you use a measuring tool, like a wrench or a pair of outside calipers. And I'll link to all this stuff in the description, so you can pick these tools up if you don't have them already. One way to get a diameter is to part a little bit, then check with the caliper. Then part again, check, part, check, etc., etc., until you get down to the diameter that you like. A more efficient and more common technique is to hold the parting tool in one hand and the calipers in the other hand, and then part down slowly until the calipers just slip over the turning. That's when you know you've reached the exact correct diameter. This is a slightly more advanced technique, but it's not difficult to learn, and it's much more efficient. Once you've created two exact diameters with the parting tool, you can connect them together with a gouge or other tool to make a cylinder of uniform diameter, and that's useful for all sorts of things. You also might cut parting lines of a given diameter and then use a detail tool like the spindle gouge to turn coves, beads, or other decorative items. Finally, the diamond parting tool can also be used to add some details to pieces. So you might go along a cylinder and add a series of parting cuts just to make it more interesting, or to add grip for a tool handle. Now, these won't be very fine details because the parting tool is kind of thick and coarse, but it's still a great way to add some interest to a piece, especially with a tool that's not very difficult to use. Sharpening and using the parting tool isn't complicated, and I can explain it to you right now. My parting tool, like most of them, is sharpened at a 70-degree included angle. That means each side of it is sharpened to a 35-degree bevel. Sharpening this correctly is not difficult. I typically use a jig. A lot of people like the Wolverine. I just made one myself. Really doesn't matter which direction you go. I put the handle end of the tool in the cup of the jig arm, and then set the tool up so the bevel is right against the wheel. I already know the geometry of mine is correct, so I don't have to worry about getting the angle exactly right. As long as I follow what I already have, I'll be fine. I turn on the grinder and lean the tool in very gently until I think I've ground the whole face. Then I flip it over and grind the other face very lightly. What I'm looking for is a bevel that's been sharpened all the way down both sides, and I want the tip to be straight and clean. I don't want any little pits or dings in the edge, and I don't want rounded over corners. This is the cutting edge, and I want to get a square and clean shoulder from it. And that starts when you're sharpening. After you've finished grinding the tool, it can be very helpful to hone it using an inexpensive diamond hone like this red DMT I have here. That's just going to refine the edge and make it cut more cleanly and with less friction. You can also stop and hone while you're turning to refresh the tool edge without having to go to the grinder. Using the tool is straightforward because there aren't too many ways you can do it. So get your piece spinning, set your parting tool on the tool rest, being very careful to hold it straight up and down. Lean it into the work, and then slowly bring the cutting edge to bear. What you want is for the edge of the tool to slice the work, and chips to come rolling off the top bevel. That's when you know it's working correctly. For shallow parting cuts, you don't have too much to worry about. But deeper cuts can be more challenging, and there are a couple of tricks you can use to make them come out better. One thing you can do is sharpen your tool frequently. Anytime you find yourself pushing it hard into the work, stop and either hone it or grind it. Your tool's dull. The second thing you can do if you're doing a deep parting cut is actually make two parting cuts next to one another. 
And instead of just plunging straight into the work with the tool, deepen each cut one at a time, going back and forth so that you have a nice wide parting cut. When you do it that way, you don't have wood on both sides of the tool. It's only on one side or the other as you switch back and forth between your cuts. That way the tool isn't captured between two tightly fitting pieces of spinning wood. Doing it this way is going to reduce heat buildup and make it way less likely that the workpiece is going to grab your tool and fling it out of your hand. Which is bad. I would say that the diamond parting tool is an essential turning tool, both for spindles and for bowl work, especially if you use your faceplate. Diamond parting tools are relatively safe, they're inexpensive, and they're easy to master. You can probably learn everything you need to know about the tool in about an hour. If you buy a set of beginner tools, make sure it has a diamond parting tool in it. And if you're picking up individual tools to start turning with, grab a diamond parting tool, because you'll find a million different uses for it. If topics like this interest you, you might want to pick up my book, One Week to Wood Turning. It's a complete guide to all the gear you need to get started in the craft. I cover lathes, grinders, tools, sharpening, shop setup, safety, dust collection, and a million other really useful topics. With my book, you seriously can get started wood turning in one week. If you're interested in more information about that, go to rexkruger.com book and check it out. If you're interested in learning more about the parting tool, grab the tip sheet. It's a one-page illustrated guide to the tool with a bunch of different specifics, sharpening angles, and extra tips. You can find it at rexkruger.com articles or click on the link. It's totally free. And finally, I'm doing a whole series of videos on individual turning tools. So if you found this interesting, click the link for the playlist and watch the rest of them. And hey, thanks a lot for watching.